Hello actualized dreamers, do you find yourself setting impossible goals, never getting started, struggling to prioritize and constantly changing your mind about what it is that you are really meant to do? Now, no matter what your personality is, you might find that it's difficult to set and achieve goals. Introverts tend to set passive goals. Extroverts tend to have too many different goals. Intuitives tend to set too abstract goals. Sensors tend to be too realistic and sometimes miss out on real possibilities in their lives. Feeling types tend to set goals that ultimately are too compromising on your own happiness and well-being and could be a little bit more selfish. And thinking types struggle to set goals that, in a sense, provide them with any personal form of value focusing too much on what is objective and what is logical. Judging types tend to set goals that are too far <laughs> into the future and that require too much conscientiousness and too much work, ultimately stressing themselves out. And perceiving types tend to set too many different goals and perceiving types ultimately tend to get too distracted too easily, losing track of what it was that they were really supposed to do. Okay, so what can you do in order to get better at goal setting and achieving your goals? Well, first things first, my name is Eric Thorand. As a kid, I always knew what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to be a philosopher and I knew I wanted to share theories and ideas and make discoveries that would help provide the world with more peace and help people improve their well-being. Okay, so this is a goal I've been working towards for a long time and so I've taken a lot of strategies to do that, right? So I spent a long time digging into what it really means to uh, be a philosopher, what, it, what are some practical steps I could take to get myself in that direction. I also taught a lot about what I need to read, what I need to learn, what I need to study in order to achieve these things. Also beyond that, I've set up tracking apps that allow me to constantly measure how I'm doing and how far I'm going towards this goal in the future, right? So that means, you know, how many books do I read in a year, how many times do I study, how many online courses do I take, and how often do I engage with the people and engage in writing and journaling exercises to express my own ideas, how many videos do I make, and how is the quality of my videos, right? So. That means my goals have to be measurable too. And of course they have to be relevant, right? So in that sense, um, they have to be something that provides a genuine solves a problem in the world, right? So you have to think, is there any problem in the world that's being solved by this goal, right? Do I make the world better somehow? Like, am I helping people in my local community somehow? Am I, you know, doing something that uh, people need? Am I giving something that the world needs, right? That's making it relevant. Relevant can be, you know, uh, is it relevant to your personal situation? Is it relevant to what you do? Uh, but it can also be, you know, is it relevant to others? Do other people get any benefit from this? If your goal is to collect rocks, well, what benefit does that serve, you know? Well, yeah, if you're planning to open up a museum, well, maybe that's relevant, right? So that's what you've got to think about. How can I make this relevant to others? How can I make this useful? How can I solve problems with this? But of course, it has to feel achievable. A lot of people set impossible goals, goals that simply cannot be put to practice. And a lot of the time, goals are so abstract that we find ourselves in this loop where it's like, uh, you know, I want to stop climate change. Well, how can you? alone stop climate change that's not possible right finally your goals have to be time bound and that means that they have to have some kind of deadline right and okay if you have an overarching big life goal those don't necessarily need, need a time limit right they can be something you engage in until you die right and death can be that time limit you know uh, ultimately death has been a big motivator for a lot of progress in the world uh, people's fear of that often makes them realize, you know, that there are important things that you need to do. But even when you have big life goals like that, it's still good to set sub goals, smaller goals that help you get further into that destination, right? So, for example, uh, you know, a goal of uh, providing theories and ideas that make people happier, provide more peace. Well, it still needs to think about, you know, what do you want to do this year, right? Like, what do you want to do by the end of this year? What do you want to have published? What do you want to have written? What do you have to have? What, what do you want to have read? What do you want to have done, right? Like, do you plan to do any public speaking? Do you plan to do any lectures? Do you plan to start up any communities or do any organization work, nonprofit work, right? 
what are you planning to do to make that happen, right? So that's making it time bound, making smaller goals that you can achieve that will set you towards your long-term goal. Now, if you find yourself even struggling to even conceptualize goals, like feeling like you don't have any goals, feeling like you don't know what your goal is, right? Well, one thing you can do is you can just go to your nearest arts and crafts store. And in this arts and crafts store, I want you to buy a colorful A2 paper. And on top of that, I want you to buy some colorful pens, colorful big pens that you can use. Uh, preferably not the whiteboard ones, get the permanent markers, right? Okay. And um, once you've got that, you want to go home, put that up on your wall with some tape. And then after that, I want you to divide it into four corners. The first corner has to be, what do you like to do? The second thing, what do you want to do for the world, right? What, what problem do you want to solve? What are things you want to do to make the world better, right? Third, what is something that you are good at? That's the third corner. And finally, fourth, what is something you can get paid doing? So this is kind of the Ikigai concept of vision board. So basically what you want to do is you want to think and write down as many things that you can on these pieces of corners, right? So you want to, in this what I like corner, you want to write down all your hobbies and interests, all the things that you find fascinating, all the things that uh, people that you like, all the things that you care about, right? And on top of that, you know, on this problem of, you know, what do I want to do for the world? You want to think about all the problems that have upset you, you know, like things that you dislike, you know, the fact that, uh, you know, there is homelessness in your time, the fact that, you know, uh, tramps don't run on time, the fact that, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there's conflicts in the world, right? Like all the things that you feel like, you know, these are things are not good and I want to do something about that, right? And for the third one, for your skills, you want to think about everything that you feel like you've demonstrated some sizable skill or ability in, right? So if there's anything you've noticed that you've got talent in, you know, from drawing to maths to uh, writing to public speaking, you know, like think about all these things and try to, every time you think of something, you can always come back to this later. You can add more things as you go, right? If you uh, take this, you can also ask your friends, you know, what is something you noticed that I'm very good at, right? Oh, you can add that to the list, right? And of course, for four, you want to think about, you know, what is something I can get paid doing? What are some careers that I find interesting? What are some things that, that I can earn money doing, right? And you want to add that into the fourth corner. Now, after you fill this out, things you can do is you can start drawing lines and connections here. So you can draw lines between these different corners. You can say that, hey, my interest in uh, uh, art and my ta talent for art and drawing and my desire to help other people and uh, provide more color to the world and uh, to make a gray world a little bit more meaningful, you know, uh, those things all go together. And uh, for example, being a designer might, for example, help me achieve that or get me further in that direction, right? Because designers uh, can make a lot of money by providing and creating artistic drawings and illustrations and things like that, right? So these kind of thoughts really help you see, you know, what is it my goal is? And that's ultimately the goal of vision boards. You know, you can have them on your wall. They can be a reminder of what it is that you want to do. And they can give you some tangible steps and ideas of what really matters to you. Now, what's really important to remember is that goals don't have to be selfless, altruistic or amazing things, right? A lot of people believe that goals have to be something that will inspire other people around you and make other people feel awe or impress, be impressed by you, right? Like people often think, you know, my goal has to be to be the number one. My goal has to be to win. My goal has to be to be the best, you know? But ultimately that's not really the case, right? Goals can be kind of selfish, can be small, and can be a lot more <laughs> practical in their nature. And often the best goals are the best goals are goals that are about you, not about the world or what other people think about you. Obviously, you can't control whether you become famous or not. You can't control whether, you know, climate change is happening or not. You can't uh, single-handedly stop homelessness. But uh, you can make small, sizable efforts in your local hometown. You can do things around you that, you know, help solve some problems or some parts of the problem and something we all have to remember is we are ultimately small people we are ultimately all human and the most important thing is what you do for the people around you not what you do for the world in its whole ultimately of course everyone has to work together to solve problems across the world but all problems 
have to be sold locally, right? So you think globally, but you act locally. In that sense, you think about you know global problems and issues. And you recognize that you're not alone. There's problems all over the world, and there are people working hard all over the world to make things better. And ultimately, you have to do something about what's happening in your hometown, in your area, and where you live. And so, a lot of the time, you know, while we have this possibility on the internet, on different communities, like for example, I have my Patreon channel where people can join and be a part of the community and, you know, connect with each other and learn more about themselves. It's very important to not forget that there is also a local community available to you. There's most likely places and resources available to you. There's probably uh, people around you with similar interests where you live. There is probably uh, career opportunities. You know, there's probably other options that are much closer to you as well. So it doesn't have to uh, put you on the pipeline towards online content creation or anything like that. It can also be something that you just do in your hometown or with your friends or family or with people that you care about. And often doing things locally feels much more fulfilling in a sense because you have a relationship with all these people and these are people you know and care about. And in that sense, you know, uh, you might inspire and help these people. You might make the world a bit better. And of course, most importantly, you are helping yourself, right? So a lot of the time goals, the best goals are self-serving, right? So. If you had a traumatic childhood and that inspired you to be a psychologist and that helped you work through your problems and issues and it allowed you to help other people, that's the best kind of a goal, isn't it, right? Because it helps you and it helps others and because it helps you and because it rewards you, it also makes your life better and it will motivate you more, right? A selfless goal is not going to be motivating in the long term. A selfless goal, a goal that completely denies your own value, your own matter and your own meaning it's going to drain you. It's going to make you feel like you've been sucked dry of energy at some point. You know, you can't just run on compassion alone. If you run on compassion alone, you're going to find yourself burning yourself out for a quest that gives you nothing. So find ways to not just help other people, but also find ways to continuously help yourself and think about what your goals do to help you improve, to help you grow, to help you be happier, to help you connect with others and to help you live the best life possible. Yeah, notice how when I set goals, I talk about synergy. Goals can't just be one thing. Goals have to solve multiple problems. And the same goes for personality. A best goal is a goal that is both introverted and extroverted. It has both purpose for yourself and also for others. The best goal is both intuitive and sensory. It is abstract enough that it can give you something to work on for the rest of your life. And it's also practical enough that there are things you can do in your day-to-day -day lives to make that happen. The best goal is not just something that uh, makes the world better, for, uh, solves some kind of altruistic purpose or helps others, but the best goal is also something that, something that can pay your bills, something that can uh, solve problems, something that can make your life a little bit better too. And of course, a good goal is something that helps you organize and prioritize your life. But also, a goal should be open-ended enough that you are allowed to explore and change as you go and learn from your experiences. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have a goal and something you care about, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And let's inspire each other with some cool, really nice, simple, smart and achievable goals. Thank you for watching.